it's, it's not there for majors of wrestling tonight. Josh and I are going to be talking about Survivor Series 2023. Josh, we've got so much to talk about tonight. But let's talk about the biggest talking point of tonight's show. CM Punk is back after being fired from AEW earlier this year. And after being away almost 10 years, he made his grand return tonight in his hometown of Chicago. What were your thoughts on his return? I mean, as I told you before, we kind of went live here. I was just starting to get a little bit salty. I'll admit I was kind of saying, dang it, he didn't make it. He didn't make the return. And just like Bray Wyatt about a year or so ago, they got me. They got me. And, I mean, I literally was just saying, I almost, almost out loud, said, dang it. And then literally, it's ch-ch-ch. and then, I mean, it was perfect. It was perfect timing. I mean, the excitement I had was almost like, I don't want to say the Monday Night Wars almost, but I mean, it was it was such an exciting thing to see. It did my heart good to see it. Like when Brett returned, same feeling. I was like, man, okay, good. We're back where we need to be. I kid you not. I looked around and I made, I wanted to make sure I didn't see any flying pigs because, you know, as the saying goes, when pigs fly, right? Or when hell freezes over. Right. Never in my life did I think we would see CM Punk back in the day. I put on my old CM Punk shirt, one of my CM Punk shirts. From back, I haven't worn this since he left WWE. Wow, this was his WWE shirt, and I was so surprised. You know, there was so much speculation as to whether or not CM Punk was going to be here tonight. Um, a WWE denied reports that he was going to be here, yep. and he showed up tonight. So, you know, I don't know if you've seen, but there was a somebody posted a clip of Seth Rollins, like he was flipping off CM Punk, and they had to hold him back. I honestly think that what I don't know if that was a legit response or if he's working the crowd, but I knowing Seth Rollins, I think it could possibly be a work. But I do know that if there could be a money feud between them, what do you think? I think if we go back to when they asked Rollins a couple of months ago about like, "Hey, dude, you're a cancer. Stay away from here," and I thought, what a very off the cuff, unusual. Uh, I don't want to say bashing, but I kind of wondered back then if it was a work because, again, WWE usually does not let their guys say stuff like that, especially calling somebody a cancer, unless there's, again, smoke to the, you know, there's smoke to the fire, essentially. And I mean, I thought it was such a weird thing for him to say because, again, it kind of played into the narrative of what the AEW guys were saying. And I thought, well, surely most of the time you get your can kind of, oh, I would love to have him here. He's a very controversial figure. He would do good. And, Rollins just come out and say, you're a cancer dude, stay away. I kind of thought that was setting the seeds way back when. So I'm I'm not surprised. But again, a lot of WWE has been very meta recently. Again, a lot of the stuff I talked about in our, review, our preview, our predictions, that you know, there's a lot of stuff in the background that we don't see. And it could be very well that they might reference that on Raw when they do have an inevitable feud of, hey, look, you know, this is what your reaction was when I showed back up. So... Again, I think it is part of the story. I think it's definitely a unique little twist, and it's something that it's almost like a, a bonus for the crowd for being there. Because, again, it would make sense. Why would Rollins all of a sudden be happy the guy being there when he called him a cancer? So it's kind of continuity. So I thought it was great. I mean, I really think it's going to be a good, realistic feud, kind of like his with Cody, same one. But, yeah, definitely, I definitely do agree with you. Like, I – was kind of like, is he going to show up? Is he not going to show up? And they pretty much did the Bray Wyatt thing of last year. You know, they showed the logo, the camera was panning out, and then all of a sudden his music hits. So. It's kind of like the Marvel thing, right? You kind of have to wait till the end. You're kind of like, okay, is it going to be something? Okay, it is, and it pays off. Yeah, definitely. But. I'm curious to see where this goes. Like I said, Seth Rollins was having a fit at the end, but it could just be a work. And Monday Night Raw is probably going to have their highest viewership to date. Do they open with Punk or do they wait till the 9 o'clock hour? I would think they'd have to open up with Punk to start with to get everybody involved to see what the heck is going to go on. Yeah, but you also want to keep people to the very end. I know it's it's one of those it's a hard thing because I mean do you want everybody to start watching do you want it to be I don't know because I mean with Bret Hart I mean granted again they were going head to head with TNA's Monday Night War at the time so I mean I get it I don't, I don't know I mean I for me I'd like to kind of see maybe I don't know it's hard to say you want to keep them at the end you want to keep it at the at the beginning but 
do you have him wrestle? Do you wait until Royal Rumble? I mean, that's all these questions have to be answered tomorrow. I mean, or not tomorrow, Monday. Now, gosh, it's a whole other day of waiting. That's the hard part. Now it's two days of waiting, not just one day. So it's going to build and build now over the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Now, let me ask you something. Did you by chance think that maybe um, he was going to come out in the match? Because as you saw throughout the entire show, they were teasing Randy Orton's not there. Randy Orton's not there. And the crowd was chanting CM Punk. I, I kind of thought that. But then I think once we got to the point of where the Judgment Day was dominant at the end, I was like, okay, it's probably going to be an Orton spot because Orton can kind of fit RKO, RKO, or he could RKO anybody. Where I thought Punk's finish is more of a setup. So I don't know. I, I kind of really figured it had been more of a, again, going back to the prediction show, either he would have come out as the cash-in was happening or it could have been when the referee turned around, there's Punk and the crowd goes crazy. You don't know what happens. And there he is holding the briefcase going like this. I mean, I'd have been fine with that too. So I, I, for a moment I did, but then I think once I thought about it, like maybe when they were dominating, I'm like, eh, they're not going to have him clean house that easy. They're going to have something kind of cutesy with Punk, I thought. Yeah, and since well, we're at it, let's talk about this men's war games match. It was Team Cody Rhodes, which was Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, and Randy Orton versus The Judgment Day and Drew McIntyre. Now, I kind of I, I kind of thought that I told myself, okay, Team Cody has to win this, right? And the fact that they were teasing that Randy Orton wasn't going to be there, I'm like, okay, you're, you guys are setting yourselves up for failure because if CM Punk is, I mean, if Randy Orton is going to still show up and you're teasing, you're teasing, he's not going to be there. This crowd's probably going to boo him. You don't want that. I was presently surprised to find out that they still cheered for him and he still got a massive pop. I was worried because, again, you're teasing he's not going to be there. You're teasing CM Punk. This crowd in, has it in their mind CM Punk is going to be there. And you, he does, you don't deliver. They're going to steal the show. And was very happy to find out that Randy Orton did not get booed here. There wasn't as many CM Punk chances I thought necessarily throughout the night. But I think it's one of those things that kind of, I think Triple H has trained all of us to kind of say, you know, maybe... Again, I mean, it may not be that meta. It may not be that sort of inception. But I kind of think about, like, you know, he's trained us for a year to, you know, start looking for stuff in the background. And, again, maybe it's just because, if anything, going back to your original question, I thought, if anything, Orton not showing up could have been like Nakamura had taken him out or something, and then that's when Punk would have come in. But, I mean, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I was pleasantly surprised again that they were happy to see him, but I think because it's Orton and he's been gone for so long, I think it worked. If it would have been like, I don't know, let's say Rey Mysterio coming out, then it would have been total booze and nobody would have cared. But because Orton's been gone for almost two years, I think they got away with it that way. And that's the only reason why. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I feel like they could get away with that a little bit, you know, but again, like I was just really concerned that he was to get booed out of there because he wasn't seeing Punk, but... While we're on this match, did you have a favorite spot? You know, as hokey as it was, I really liked the five-person person apron DDT. I thought that was a cool visual, something you don't really see very often. It was kind of an homage. Um, the Super RKO was good. I mean, again, you kind of knew it was a setup at this point. It was going to happen. But I really, I guess that was one of my favorite moments, is that just the, the Super RKO and then the... Um, Stereo, that's what the word I was thinking of. Stereo, I, apron DDTs. I thought that was a really cool moment in the match. Yeah, definitely. That super RKO and the five DDTs is a really cool spot. Another spot that I liked was that little moment that teased between Randy Orton and Jey Uso. I thought, I legit thought after the match was over and they were all going like that, I legit thought Randy was going to hit Jey Uso with an RKO. Had Punk not returned, I thought that we're going to do that. I thought that was going to be a way to send the crowd home happy, kind of a little like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But I think because of Punk's return, I think it that spot's going to probably – it may be a storyline later on. It may be one of those that, you know – I'll be honest with you. I, so many thoughts went through my head through this match. I thought Orton's not there. Could Jey Uso have attacked Randy Orton and didn't say anything? Could it have been that? I mean, again, it would have been far-fetched, but this match was – predictable but unpredictable especially the edit and i like that they added that element of you weren't really sure because i thought maybe if orton rko's jay uso and it cost cody the match again i was hoping my team would win obviously but i don't know i i kind of was interested to see what was going to happen 
no lie, when re when they did, when they teased the cash in, when they teased the cash in, I was like, oh my god, it's gonna go down. And when Randy Orton was coming down to ring, I kid you not, I felt for Rhea. I thought she was gonna get arcade-owed. I thought like, oh, here it comes, but no, it didn't happen. I feel like they're saving that for another time. Rumble, maybe. But I definitely do think she's gonna get an RKO. Her and Jey Uso. Both. Yes, definitely. Oh, I agree. I thought this was a fun match overall. Very fun match. Yeah, it was it was good. It was good pacing. Like I never got to sometimes war games, I hate to say, not that they're boring. But you can tell sometimes that it's like, okay, I know you're all waiting for the next guy to come in. I know what's going on. But these both these war games tonight, and especially the men's, I thought, and women's were very good about pacing. It was one of those that, you know, we didn't have this sort of like them waiting around and laying on the ground kind of thing. And I don't it felt like a fight. It felt like a war for once. And I really enjoyed that. Definitely. All right. Now let's talk about the women's war games match, which kicked off Survivor Series. It was Team Damage Control versus it's Team Bianca, which was Becky Lynn, Charlotte Flair, Bianca herself, and Shotzi. Now, I have to say, I thought this was a good match. Great opening contest. I thought the ladies killed it. Uh, my first spots in this match was when Damage Control was whacking uh, Team Bianca like they were pinatas. I, I mean, the trash can spot to me is going to be the spot of the year. I mean, that woman is crazy to yeah. do that. And I loved every single minute of it. And I mean, I was disappointed with the result. I was hoping Damage Control was going to pull it out. But I understand kind of the storyline within the storyline of why they lost. So I kind of get that, too. And I appreciate I, that. I have to agree to disagree here. I agree that Team Bianca should not have won. I thought damage, this was the match for Damage Control. I get the story then they're, they're trying to tell. Okay, but he's going to get the boot. I feel like it's kind of too soon. I feel like it's too soon. I feel like you should have had damage control win here. Okay. And then on the road to WrestleMania, like in the Royal Rumble, you kick Bailey out of the group. I just feel like, I mean, I get it. Like, okay, like you're, they're going to kick Bailey out and then we're going to get the unstoppable damage control. I feel like, no, like now was the time where you need to make damage control unstoppable and then you kick Bailey out of the group. But I, I guess, because to me, what does Team Bianca gain out of winning this? <clears throat> like, really, it made no sense for them to win. I think the thing with the whole Bailey being kicked out thing, I think it really started back when Bailey started talking for EO. Remember when I think it was her and I believe it was Oscar, and she was like, "Yeah, Oscar, you want to fight EO?" Blah blah. She's like, "She didn't say that. She didn't say that." I think that's really going to be the idea. The old genius of the sky is that she got tired of her talking for her, and I think that's why. I mean, again, I agree. It, it is. It's very soon to happen. But I think this has been planting the seeds ever since EO Sky has been in damage control because Bailey has been talking for her and Kai. Where Kai is, let's say, young or rookie ish, I think Sky is more veteran. I think, I don't even know if she's more veteran than Bailey, maybe not. But I think it's going to come down to the fact that once Bailey started talking and making matches for it, I think that's where the storyline really started. And I think that that's why they're trying to tie both those storylines together. At this point, again, I mean, I, I don't mind a longer build, but I think it's just one of those like, since they started doing the whole like, oh Bailey, they're saying this about you, it kind of made sense, and they pushed Bailey to go first. In the I work. guess, yeah, yeah. I feel bad for her though because she tried her best to save that match for her team, and she ended up costing them the victory. Yep. Yeah. So next we get the WWE Intercontinental Championship match. It is Gunter versus The Miz. I thought this was a really good match. I knew going into this match. There is no way the Miz is going to win, but I knew it was going to be a really good match, and it did not disappoint. Like the Miz pulled it all out to try to beat Gunter, but ultimately he he submitted with a Boston Crab. What were your thoughts on this match? <clears throat> I thought this match was good because I think it really showed that Miz was purposely trying to wrestle, doing the, you know, uh, I think it was the stomp to Gunter's. Um, calf match i thought that was there was a more of a story of miz kind of showing he could hang with gunther and chopping him and slapping him and i mean i'll admit it they got me for half a second whenever he low blow gunther and hit the uh skull crushing finale i thought no surely not and then they got me i mean it's hard to get me but with gunther matches i'm like you know what i would have been mad if it happened 
But I've been like, it makes sense for the Miz character to get back at the bully, essentially. So the match was good. I, I wasn't as bored as I expected, and it went longer than I expected, but I was happy that it went longer, if that makes sense. You know, they got me too. I thought when the Miz low blowed Gunter, I was like, oh, this is it. This is Gunter's nope. So, but I'm not I'm not mad about it. You know, I thought it was a really good match. Miz still looked good. Yes, and, and, to, and to submit to a Boston and Crab was a unique ending because I did not expect that. I expected a powerbomb chop, so a submission victory for Gunter, and not a sleeper hold, uh, just a Boston Crab. I guess I wonder if they're – I just like the idea that they're kind of ending matches. Like, I, when's the last time you've seen anything end with a Boston and Crab except, what, Lance Storm's finish way back when, 20 years ago? So I kind of liked that it. it was a random, like, oh, a Boston Crab. Okay, I mean, that could be a finish, and I guess maybe the idea is – Gunther could be the man of a thousand finishes, right? He could just beat you any way he wants to. So I kind of like that idea. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah. I, I, I had no issues with this match or the finish. Nope. Because I still think Chad Gay was going to be the one to take the belt off of Gunther. It makes sense. And, and and it has to be that way because otherwise, why build the entire thing? Why why are they fighting Shinsuke to not just go back to Gunther eventually? I think it'd be perfect for the Rumble would be great or WrestleMania. Next, you got Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar. And honestly, this match was supposed to be Santos Escobar versus Carlito. I'm I'm not going to lie. Well, I did think this was a good match. I'm a little, I don't say sad, but I wish we could have gotten to see more of this match. I wish we could have gotten to see a little bit more because they're both fantastic wrestlers. And But honestly, I think it was the right call for Santos Escobar to win this match. I don't think it hurts Dragon Lee yet. Mm-hmm. You know, Santos Escobar, in my opinion, needed to win this. The only thing I think that they missed on it, I, I, I don't, I think the result was right, but I think the finish was wrong, meaning that, I mean, Dragon Lee's standing up for Mysterio, blah, 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 blah. And Santos, from what I understood, beat him pretty clean. I mean, it wasn't like there was any shenanigans or wasn't really anything I don't think that was terribly underhanded or. Again, Dragon Lee's momentum cannot be killed because, again, he's so new. But I still was like, dang, they sacrificed him for the sake of the story. I I don't know. I I kind of just expected somebody to align with uh, Santos at this point. Maybe Vega or maybe Del Toro, one of those guys. So I really was surprised it was ending that way, just clean. Okay. Um, I think think it had to be clean. I I think it kind of had to be, you know, because I feel like, they don't want to give us too much all in one, you know. I feel like this is not the end of this. This is not the end. So they can't pull all their eggs out in one in one match, you know. I do think, though, the next time if there is another match between them or another or Santos Escobar has another match, I do think that that's when we're gonna it's gonna be a, a not a not so clean finish. Maybe they'll do like a t- I mean, again, as crazy as it sounds, I would like to see let's say Santos and let's say Del Toro aligns with him. And then Dragon Lee gets the other guy, right? And then the idea is you're going to have this tag team match at the pay-per-view. And then when we're about to start, boom, all of a sudden they all three beat the crap out of uh, this Dragon Lee. I, I don't know. I, I think that'd be a neat kind of throwback to a WCW angle with Sting and the Horseman. I thought that was such a cool thing where it was, I think it was Sting and Flair versus Anderson. And I forget who the other guy was, but all of a sudden literally the match starts, boom, Ric Flair turns around, boom, knocks the, Sting out, and they basically beat him the whole entire time. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I like the story. I was just surprised that there wasn't, as you said, it wasn't a longer match. It was short, shorter than I expected. Yeah, but I didn't think it was a bad match. No, no, it definitely had its place, and I definitely think it woke. The, I kept the crowd engaged. A lot of these matches did. Tonight. Yeah. So we got the DJ Women Championship match. It's Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Sarks. I thought this was a decent match. It was probably one of the, out of all the matches, I feel like this one was the most predictable one of the bunch. And no surprise, Mommy's always on top. Rhea Ripley's victorious. What is there really to say? I mean, Zoe Sarks did okay, but like they really had to start building people up to take that belt off of Rhea. Because right now, no one is really believable. I think they have, though. I think that, and I think it all goes down to her visuals, just the way she does her stares and big eyes and stuff. Because, I mean, if you look at 
the original matches she had, let's say a year ago, or, or when Judgment Day began, it was very dominant, very like one-sided. And now I think they're slowly building this idea. I don't want to say it's like Roman Reigns, but if you think of Roman Reigns is stacking Edge and Daniel Bryan at one WrestleMania, the next WrestleMania, you're like, oh, it's getting closer. Oh, it's getting closer. So I kind of think it was Stark, even though, yes, we all knew Mommy was going to be on top. I think they gave her a pretty good showing here. Again, I don't, I don't think the marquee of her matched the premium live event like let's say if she would have been in payback that made more sense versus survivor series but i wasn't mad because i like zoe stark i think that she definitely has a future and i think that while they did never get me with her winning i did think they gave her a good showcase and i i appreciated that just from being a fan of zoe stark well i'm so still new to zoe stark i did not see her work in nxt um I, I i agree it was a pretty decent showing but i mean it <sighs> They, I don't think Dirty did enough to make me believe that Zoe Stark's going to actually take the belt off of Rhea. They need it. I wanted them to make me believe, like, God damn it, this she can actually beat Rhea. Like, oh my God, you know? And I don't think that they did that. And again, I don't know this. I know Trish said she wanted to come back again. Is there a chance they're going to build a Trish... And Rhea, maybe at, I don't know. Not that I think Trish would win. I would be surprised. I think it's going to be Becky and Rhea maybe at WrestleMania 40 because it makes sense they've been teasing that. But I wonder if that's kind of the idea that maybe you're going to have a legend come after and get closer and closer. And I mean, again, I don't know. But I just, I wonder if Trish is next in line or Jax or something. I, I, again, just to me, there should have been this interference. Heck, I would have taken... Nia Jax coming out and possibly costing Rhea the title. Not necessarily that she would win it, but like the idea is, holy crap, Nia Jax just did a Vader bomb or whatever to Rhea in the middle of the match. Like, be like oh, is it really going to be over? Versus, you know, Stark's not going to win on her own. So, I get yeah. you saying. There needs to be more peril for Rhea versus what we're usually seeing. Yeah, exactly. Well, I am happy that, you know, Zoe Stark did get a, a good showing. I'm just, again make me believe that she could actually beat Rhea because I didn't think she could. I knew, I knew first that she wasn't going to. Right. I, I would have rather switched. Like, like for instance, like yeah. for instance, when you go back to the Gunter and the mismatch, there were spots in that match where like, holy shit, like the Miss was actually going to beat Gunter. Yeah. But in this match, there was that one spot that made me think, oh my God, Zoe Stark is actually going to beat Rhea. I mean, she felt to hit the Z360. You would have hit, if you would have at least had Zoe Stark hit Rhea with that and then had Rhea kicked out, I was like, oh shit. Like, okay, she was so close, you know, but that's just my opinion. I'm surprised they didn't throw Jackson here instead for the marquee match of the idea of just seeing the visual of Rhea Ripley hitting her finish, Riptide, on. Nia Jax. I was kind of surprised they didn't save it for this, but again, it may be a moment they're saving for Rumble. It makes sense yeah. there because they're in Florida and, you know, the whole Samoan culture there. Yes. All right, well, that's it. We're going to stop right there since we already talked about the men's war game match. But um, on a scale of 1 to a Sean Spears perfect 10, what would you rate this pay-per-view? Removing the punk filter, as bad as it is to say that. I mean, if, I, if they didn't have punk return at the end, I would have given it I would say seven and a half. I don't think it was an eight. I think we, I think we're, it was a better pay per view than I expected. Let's put it that way. I don't think it was a nine. I don't think, let's say seven and a half because I'm not at eight just yet. With Punk, it's an eight and a half. Let's put it that way. Regardless whether Punk showed up or not, even if Punk didn't show up, regardless, I thought this was a pretty good show. It was a short show too. It only went up to, to like, it only went, what, like, what three hours? Yeah, yeah, because I was looking at the clock and I thought, okay, well, the men's war games match starting at nine. Are they really going to end this at nine thirty? So I mean, I was surprised, but I mean, I, it was good. I mean, the simplicity was good. The matches were good. I can't. You know what? I'm going to change my number. Honestly, I, I, seven and a half is not fair. I'll give it an eight because really, it was a solid show. It really was a solid show. I give it an eight too. I think for only, I think for me, what stopped it from being a Sean Spears perfect ten was um. Just the, the Rhea Ripley is always Stark's match. Not saying it was a bad match, yeah. but I just thought it was just too predictable. Like there was again, if the dirty fault and making me believe Zoe Stark was actually gonna take the ball off uh, uh, Rhea Ripley. If they would have made me believe it, and I probably would have given it an, an eight point five or a nine. But 
I just felt like that that out of all the matches, that one was the most predictable one. The only thing I worry about the war games matches now is not that not that bringing in weapons is a bad thing by any stretch. That's fine, but the idea of I think in the women's match when you had um, Shotzi bringing all those chairs and all the kendo sticks, I was kind of like. I, I don't know. Again, I'm kind of a purist with that way. I loved the war games way back when in the WCW days, and it was literally just five guys just beating the heck out of each other. And I, I, I don't. Again, not that I think it's in danger of going away or going bad. I just kind of the next one. I kind of want to have this sort of minimalist weapons type of deal, but that's just me. That is just you. <laughs> All right, Josh. Where can people find you? Uh, you know, just on Twitter or X, whatever it's called now, at Gamer Porosky. Uh, again, you can look up the last name Porosky on Facebook. I'm pretty easy. I'm the only one you'll find up there. But that's the only things for now, just those two. That's for myself. You can find me at Tatilla underscore live, Twitter and Raw, SmackDown, AEW Dynamite, the occasional Rampage, and pay-per-view. Also, uh, do the occasional Impact pay-per-view. Uh, make sure you check out my YouTube channel. I do reviews of Raw. And every, almost every wrestling show except for NXT in New Japan and Ring of Honor. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching and for the continued support. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell so you get notified whenever A Plus Your Report goes live or whenever they release a new video. And we'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.